the Tut polynomial, also called the dichromate or the Tut-Whitney polynomial, is a polynomial in two variables which plays an important role in graph theory. It is defined for every undirected graph and contains information about how the graph is connected. It is denoted by Tg. The importance of this polynomial stems from the information it contains about G. Though originally studied in algebraic graph theory as a generalization of counting problems related to graph coloring and nowhere zero flow, it contains several famous other specializations from other sciences such as the Jones polynomial from knot theory and the partition functions of the POTS model from statistical physics. It is also the source of several central computational problems in theoretical computer science. The Tut polynomial has several equivalent definitions. It is equivalent to Whitney's rank polynomial, Tut's own dichromatic polynomial and Fortune and Castellan's random cluster model under simple transformations. It is essentially a generating function for the number of edge sets of a given size and connected components with immediate generalizations to matroids. It is also the most general graph invariant that can be defined by a deletion contraction recurrence. Several textbooks about graph theory and matroid theory devote entire chapters to it. Definitions Definition For an undirected graph one may define the Tut polynomial as where denotes the number of connected components of the graph. In this definition it is clear that is well-defined and a polynomial in X and Y. The same definition can be given using slightly different notation by letting denote the rank of the graph. Then the Whitney rank generating function is defined as the two functions are equivalent under a simple change of variables. Tut's dichromatic polynomial is the result of another simple transformation. Tut's original definition of is equivalent but less easily stated. For connected G we set where denotes the number of spanning trees of internal activity I and external activity J. A third definition uses a deletion contraction recurrence. The edge contraction G, U V of graph G is the graph obtained by merging the vertices U and V and removing the edge U V. We write G minus U V for the graph where the edge U V is merely removed. Then the Tut polynomial is defined by the recurrence relation if E is neither a loop nor a bridge, with base case if G contains I bridges and J loops and no other edges, especially if G contains no edges. The random cluster model from statistical mechanics due to Fortuyn and Caseline provides yet another equivalent definition. The polynomial is equivalent to under the transformation properties the Tut polynomial factors into connected components. If G is the union of disjoint graphs H and then if G is planar and denotes its dual graph then especially the chromatic polynomial of a planar graph is the flow polynomial of its dual. Examples isomorphic graphs have the same Tut polynomial, but the converse is not true. For example, the Tut polynomial of every tree on M edges is. Tut polynomials are often given in tabular form by listing the coefficients of in row I and column J. For example, the Tut polynomial of the Peterson graph is given by the following table. Other example, the Tut polynomial of the octahedron graph is given by history. W.T. Tut's interest in the deletion contraction formula started in his undergraduate days at Trinity College, Cambridge, originally motivated by perfect rectangles and spanning trees. He often applied the formula in his research and wondered if there were other interesting functions of graphs invariant under isomorphism. With similar recursion formulae, R. M. Foster had already observed that the chromatic polynomial is one such function, and Tut began to discover more. His original terminology for graph invariants that satisfy the deletion contraction recursion was W function and V function if multiplicative over components. Tut writes, Playing with my W functions I obtained a two-variable polynomial from which either the chromatic polynomial or the flow polynomial could be obtained by setting one of the variables equal to zero. 
and adjusting signs, Tut called this function the dichromate, as he saw it as a generalization of the chromatic polynomial to two variables, but it is usually referred to as the Tut polynomial. In Tut's words, this may be unfair to Hassler Whitney who knew and used analogous coefficients without bothering to affix them to two variables. The generalization of the Tut polynomial to matroids was first published by Crapo, though it appears already in Tut's thesis. Independently of the work in algebraic graph theory, Potts began studying the partition function of certain models in statistical mechanics in 1952. The work by Fortuyn and Caselean on the random cluster model, a generalization of the Potts model, provided a unifying expression that showed the relation to the Tut polynomial, specializations, at various points and lines of the plane. The Tut polynomial evaluates to quantities that have been studied in their own right in diverse fields of mathematics and physics. Part of the appeal of the Tut polynomial comes from the unifying framework it provides for analyzing these quantities. Chromatic polynomial it the Tut polynomial specializes to the chromatic polynomial, where denotes the number of connected components a g. For integer lambda the value of chromatic polynomial equals the number of vertex colorings of g using a set of lambda colors. It is clear that does not depend on the set of colors. What is less clear is that it is the evaluation at lambda of a polynomial with integer coefficients. To see this, we observe, if g has n vertices and no edges, then, if g contains a loop, then, if e is an edge which is not a loop, then, the three conditions above enable us to calculate, by applying a sequence of edge deletions and contractions, but they give no guarantee that a different sequence of deletions and contractions will, lead to the same value. The guarantee comes from the fact that counts something, independently of the recurrence, in particular, gives the number of acyclic orientations. Jones polynomial along the hyperbola, the Tut polynomial of a planar graph specializes to the Jones polynomial of an associated alternating knot. Individual points counts the number of forests, i.e., the number of acyclic edge subsets, counts the number of spanning forests. If the graph is connected, T underscore G counts the number of spanning trees, counts the number of spanning subgraphs, counts the number of acyclic orientations of G, counts the number of strongly connected orientations of G. If G is a four regular graph, then counts the number of Eulerian orientations of G. Here is the number of connected components of G. If G is the m times n grid graph, then counts the number of ways to tile a rectangle of width 4 meters and height 4 n with t tetraminos. If G is a planar graph, then equals the sum over weighted Eulerian orientations in a medial graph of G, where the weight of an orientation is 2 to the number of saddle vertices of the orientation. Potts and Ising models define a hyperbola in the xy-minus plane. The Tut polynomial specializes to the partition function of the Ising model studied in statistical physics. Specifically, along the hyperbola the two are related by the equation, in particular, for all complex alpha. More generally, if for any positive integer q, we define the hyperbola, then the Tut polynomial specializes to the partition function of the q-state Potts model. Various physical quantities analyzed in the framework of the Potts model translate to specific parts of the flow polynomial it the Tut polynomial specializes to the flow polynomial studied in combinatorics. For a connected and undirected graph g an integer k, a nowhere zero k flow is an assignment of flow values to the edges of an arbitrary orientation of g such that the total flow entering and leaving each vertex is congruent modulo k. The flow polynomial denotes the number of nowhere zero k flows. This value is intimately connected with the chromatic polynomial. In fact, if g is a planar graph, the chromatic polynomial of G is equivalent to the flow polynomial of its dual graph in the sense that theorem. 
The connection to the Tut polynomial is given by reliability polynomial it the Tut polynomial specializes to the all-terminal reliability polynomial studied in network theory. For a connected graph G remove every edge with probability P, this models a network subject to random edge failures. Then the reliability polynomial is a function, a polynomial in P, that gives the probability that every pair of vertices in G remains connected after the edges fail. The connection to the Tut polynomial is given by dichromatic polynomial Tut also defined a closer two-variable generalization of the chromatic polynomial, the dichromatic polynomial of a graph. This is where is the number of connected components of the spanning subgraph. This is related to the core rank nullity polynomial by the dichromatic polynomial does not generalize to matroids because K is not a matroid property. Different graphs with the same matroid can have different numbers of connected components. Related polynomials Martin polynomial The Martin polynomial of an oriented four regular graph was defined by Pierre Martin in 1977. He showed that if G is a plane graph and is its directed medial graph, then algorithms deletion contraction The deletion contraction recurrence for the Tut polynomial immediately yields a recursive algorithm for computing it. Choose any such edge E and repeatedly apply the formula until all edges are either loops or bridges. The resulting base cases at the bottom of the evaluation are easy to compute. Within a polynomial factor, the running time T of this algorithm can be expressed in terms of the number of vertices N and the number of edges M of the graph, a recurrence relation that scales as the Fibonacci numbers with solution. The analysis can be improved to within a polynomial factor of the number of spanning trees of the input graph. For sparse graphs with this running time is for regular graphs of degree k, the number of spanning trees can be bounded by where so the deletion contraction algorithm runs within a polynomial factor of this bound. For example, in practice, graph isomorphism testing is used to avoid some recursive calls. This approach works well for graphs that are quite sparse and exhibit many symmetries. The performance of the algorithm depends on the heuristic used to pick the edgy Gaussian elimination in some restricted instances. The Tut polynomial can be computed in polynomial time. Ultimately because Gaussian elimination efficiently computes the matrix operations determinant and Fafian. These algorithms are themselves important results from algebraic graph theory and statistical mechanics, equals the number of spanning trees of a connected graph. This is computable in polynomial time as the determinant of a maximal principal submatrix of the Laplacian matrix A G. An early result in algebraic graph theory known as Kirchhoff's matrix tree theorem. Likewise, the dimension of the bicycle space that can be computed in polynomial time by Gaussian elimination. For planar graphs, the partition function of the Ising model, i.e., the Tut polynomial at the hyperbola, can be expressed as a Fafian and computed efficiently via the FKT algorithm. The idea was developed by Fisher, Caseline, and Tempoli to compute the number of dimer covers of a planar lattice model. Markov chain Monte Carlo using a Markov chain Monte Carlo method. The Tut polynomial can be arbitrarily well approximated along the positive branch of equivalently the partition function of the ferromagnetic Ising model. This exploits the close connection between the Ising model and the problem of counting matchings in a graph. The idea behind this celebrated result of Jeremy Sinclair is to set up a Markov chain whose states are the matchings of the input graph. The transitions are defined by choosing edges at random and modifying the matching accordingly. The resulting Markov chain is rapidly mixing and leads to sufficiently random matchings, which can be used to recover the partition function using random sampling. The resulting algorithm is a fully polynomial time-randomized approximation scheme. Computational complexity 
Several computational problems are associated with the Tut polynomial. The most straightforward one is input A graph G output the coefficients of in particular. The output allows evaluating which is equivalent to counting the number of three colorings of G. This latter question is hash P dash complete even when restricted to the family of planar graphs. So the problem of computing the coefficients of the Tut polynomial for a given graph is hash P dash hard even for planar graphs. Much more attention has been given to the family of problems called Tut defined for every complex pair. Input A graph G output the value of the hardness of these problems varies with the coordinates. Exact computation if both x and y are non-negative integers, the problem belongs to hash p. For general integer pairs, the Tut polynomial contains negative terms, which places the problem in the complexity class gap, the closure of hash p under subtraction. To accommodate rational coordinates, one can define a rational analog of hash p. The computational complexity of exactly computing falls into one of two classes for any. The problem is hash p dash hard unless lies on the hyperbola or is one of the points in which cases it is computable in polynomial time. If the problem is restricted to the class of planar graphs, the points on the hyperbola become polynomial time computable as well. All other points remain hash p dash hard, even for bipartite planar graphs. In his paper on the dichotomy for planar graphs, Vertigan claims that the same result holds when further restricted to graphs with vertex degree at most 3, save for the point, which counts nowhere 0 z3 flows and is computable in polynomial time. These results contain several notable special cases. For example, the problem of computing the partition function of the Ising model is hash p dash hard in general. Even though celebrated algorithms of Onsager and Fisher solve it for planar lattices. Also, the Jones polynomial is hash p dash hard to compute. Finally, computing the number of four colorings of a planar graph is hash p dash complete. Even though the decision problem is trivial by the four-color theorem, in contrast, it is easy to see that counting the number of three colorings for planar graphs is hash p dash complete because the decision problem is known to be NP complete via a parsimonious reduction. Approximation The question which points admit a good approximation algorithm has been very well studied. Apart from the points that can be computed exactly in polynomial time, the only approximation algorithm known for is Jerin and Sinclair's FPRAS, which works for points on the Ising hyperbola for y greater than zero. If the input graphs are restricted to dense instances with degree, there is an FPRAS if x1, y1. Even though the situation is not as well understood as for exact computation, large areas of the plane are known to be hard to approximate.